guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ali if you're new to my channel and welcome to Beauty with a Purpose. Okay, so for today, I kind of wanted to do like a laid back, old school chit chat, get ready with me. Like you used to always do, we're just gonna talk about some things and do our makeup, um, a little bit of updates and things like that. And so I guess we can go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna be using a lot of the same products and I'll try to pop up on the screen what I'm using and how much it costs. And so we're gonna go ahead and start out with priming our face. And so I guess the first thing we could talk about is from now on, at least for a little while, until I kind of see what our finances are looking like after our first check where the insurance for me comes out, um, I will not be getting Ipsy anymore. So until I see how things are looking on, the, on a financial standpoint, um, which will happen after January. So for December and January for sure, I won't be getting Ipsy. I will still be doing my boxy charm unboxing. And that was a hard decision to come to because I really feel like you get your money's worth in both boxes. The only downside is you get a lot of brands that you've never really heard of in Ipsy. And that's not saying that they're bad brands or anything. It's just they're not well-known brands where people are going to want to go out and search for the brand and for the product that they want to buy. And so it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's also not great. And with BoxyCharm, like I feel like I get excited for BoxyCharm. Um, and I get excited for Ipsy too. Like I said, it was really hard to choose which one I was going to not get this month, especially now that they cost the exact same. Um, so maybe I could even alternate like one month do Ipsy, one month do BoxyCharm. Um, Oh, I remember, but I feel like, I remember why I decided to, because you can pause Ipsy. You can't pause BoxyCharm. With BoxyCharm, it's, you cancel it. You have to cancel it. And then sometimes when you cancel it, you have to go back on a wait list. Um, and so that could be really hard as well. So that's why I decided to cancel Ipsy because I can start that one back up whenever. With BoxyCharm, it's not a for sure thing that I'll get right back in with it. I was thinking of upgrading to BoxyCharm Premium because it would still be $20 less than paying for both boxes. So let me know if you guys would rather see that for me to upgrade to Premium or you'd rather me just get the BoxyCharm until I'm able to get both again. Um, the reason I was getting both is because I was working. I was pulling in a little bit of money. and But I did decide to stop working again because I don't know. I just, I like being home with my babies. I get to invest more time into my channel. And since I've been doing that, I've noticed that my channel has been growing. And I'm learning more tips and tricks and things on how to edit things. And so if you guys want to see that as well, also let me know. Let me know about that as well. Um, Got to do my eyebrows now. Okay, so now I'm done doing my eyebrows 10,000 years later. But what I was saying was, what was I saying? And I kept reminding myself saying, this is what you were talking about. This is what you were talking about. And then I forgot. <laughs> Made me some iced coffee today. And it's bomb. It's so bomb. Oh, do you guys want to see like how I edit, how I make my inserts, how I do my green screens and things like that. Cause maybe you just started a YouTube channel and you know, we don't all have the money to go buy a $300 program to edit and make our videos look cool, which is why I started dibbling and dabbling, messing with my computer. And I'll say this, the one thing that I did invest in was buying a Mac. You can get one, whether it be the desktop. I got the desktop. Um, and I ended up doing that because for one, for storage, two, so that way I wouldn't get in the habit of constantly working wherever I was at. I would have to get up and go sit in one designated area for work and then it wouldn't, and it wouldn't 
it wouldn't intervene with family time or anything like that or me going to bed and working in the bed and then just my body getting bed confused with work so that's why i got a desktop me personally um so that way i knew whenever i was sitting there it's time to work um because if you get up you're gonna have to come log in all over again and everything like that i can't just take it with me so it gets me to sit still in one spot and be able to edit a video all the way through without any interruptions and without confusing places of rest for places of work so it is one thing that I invested in and only because it already had iMovie on it. So I wasn't going to have to buy, let's say, a Windows computer and then go buy a software pack for editing. So it came with iMovie on there. So I did invest in that. And now when you do have a Mac, you have the option to go and purchase the $300 software for Final Cut Pro. What I do is I use systems that the Mac already came with and I make inserts that kind of resemble Final Cut Pro because I can't do everything that Final Cut Pro does, but I can make my videos a little bit more cool or to, not cool, but like more interesting and fun and make like the pop-ups and like the, the prices that like spin in and out. I can do things like that using systems that already come on the Mac. Because I mean, you're already spending so much money on an Apple computer why have to spend more for an editing software when you can use what you have? And that's just where I've been. Um, another reason I went with Mac is because I film on my iPhone. I have the iPhone um, XR. Um, I'm not in a rush to upgrade to the 11 because I can get 4K, 4K quality with the back camera. But here's the thing with iMovie, it will only let you save it as 1080. But it brings it in as 4K, so the quality is still a little bit better than just recording on 1080 and uploading on 1080. You upload on 4K, um, you can record on 4K, it'll go into the computer as 4K, but it'll save to the computer as 1080. I don't know why it started doing that. I do have a few couple videos where it let me um, save a video in 4K, and then it's like, I don't know, like it picks and chooses when it wants to do that. And so yeah, I recommend, but yeah, like I can show you guys how I do all that stuff on iMovie if you wanna see that, because you can do like the screen record on your computer as well. And then I could do like the voiceover of what I'm doing, how I'm doing it and things like that. Um, I can show you how I do a vid beauty video like this or how I do like my unboxings where I insert clips and prices and everything like that. Or I can do, you know, just something really, really simple. For instance, my Jesus chats. Um, or I can show you like a little bit of all three in one video to show you different clips. Let's see, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, um, I've been watching and learning and reading a lot. And when I say reading, I always mean the Bible. There, it may be very seldom that I read a faith-based book, um, but I'm always reading the Bible, always learning, always studying. You guys know that. Um, a couple good people that I like to watch here on YouTube whenever it comes to like faith and the knowledge and the things that are unseen and unknown. Um, I like watching Chronicles of Judah 144, and I'll link all their channels down below. I like watching Chronicles of Judah 144. I like watching Katia Lamore in Christ. And I like watching Truth Unedited. That's all I watch right now. I will say this, you really have to be in a good place when I, if you're gonna watch Chronicles of Judah because he knows a lot about scripture. He's very in the know of things. He's very wise, but he does have a filthy mouth, which is something that my husband and I just can't seem to grasp is like, like dude you have so much knowledge and biblical wisdom like why why do you talk like that <laughs> but um he is going to tell you the truth he he will teach you inner workings of the industry and break a lot of things down for you and things like that he talks a lot about idols and the pagan gods and things like that and so that's why i love watch and he backs it up with scripture so that's why i like watching chronicles of judah 144 now, um, if you're a woman and you just want like that one-on-one -on -one woman time, that's, I really like watching, um, I really like watching Katia Lamore in Christ because she's gonna come to you on a woman level um, and really break it down and make things a lot more easier for you to grasp and understand. And yeah, so, um, and when it comes to truth and edited, 
he's for men or women and it's a very um it's a very informative he breaks down the bible to the t his is strictly bible based um he does talk a little bit about um one world religion coexisting the mark of the beast he goes into like what signs and symbols means and he also goes into the entertainment industry a little bit not as much as chronicles of judah but i like watching both of them because they balance each other's out um i go to truth unedited more so to get the biblical aspect and to know that I know that I know that what I'm being taught is being backed up with scripture. And then I go to Truth Unedited just that way. I mean, I'm sorry, it's Chronicles of Judah, just so that way I can know what things to look out for in a person and things like that and um, what things to be aware of and truth and edited will help you with this too but if you have a problem with idolizing famous people or looking up to famous people that is what chronicles of judah is for um so yeah i watch all three of those i watch katia lamore just more so by myself i do watch try to watch chronicles of judah and truth and edited like with brian and brian and i will actually side note because i'm going way off the topic here brian and i will actually be doing a video together soon um talking about marriage how we met our process because we really feel like a lot of people look at us and they're just like oh they met they got married they were never friends and like that's not the case like brian and i getting married was actually a lot longer than what people think like people just seen the few weeks that we were dating and then the fact that we wanted to get married and then us getting married like that's all people seen was like the dating for three months boom married like nobody saw the friendship nobody saw all the times i told him no like nobody saw all that and so we just thought it would be a good idea to just you know break it down for people and now i can start going into talking about marriage like i wanted to so i have or had a lot of friends that well, acquaintances, I guess I could call now, that were really believing in being married. And the more that I sit here and I learn about women and I learn about which direction this world is going in and like I look at the characteristics of people, I'm just like, are you truly ready to be a wife? Because the world that we live in, like women want all the power. Women want to be the head. Women want to be a char in charge. And that's not how God designed things to be. He said, because women were deceived, therefore we should always be under the authority of a man. And that's just how things were because as women we're easily deceived, we go based off of feelings a lot. And so that's not to say that women aren't supposed to be married. Women should be married and have male headship and know what that means. And now I say that women aren't ready is because women aren't ready to surrender power and if you can't even surrender and if you, you can't surrender power and not want to be in charge well then how are you going to allow your husband to be a husband and be the man of god that god is calling him to be you know he's not he can't cater to you he's not supposed to cater to you he's supposed to constantly wear the mind of christ and pleasing god now if he's constantly worried about and this is why there's always the fall of man behind a woman because you become more worried they become more worried about pleasing the woman and then they forget about pleasing god and then that's where you fall into sin start serving the wrong gods then you start idolizing then they, then they'll start idol, idol, idolizing the wife and that's not how it's supposed to be now, am I saying that Brian doesn't give me any attention? Brian doesn't care about me? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I also don't want it to be that way. I want Brian to be the head. I want Brian to take charge. Like, that's just what I want. Um, every woman's not me. Every woman's not like me. And I don't expect every woman to be. But you do have to have just a little bit of wisdom in things and know your role, I guess you could say. I really don't like these shimmers with the brush really know your role and your place as a wife and if you feel like i'm being like rude or this or that but there is scripture that says that the wife is supposed to be in the house like you know what i mean like the wife is supposed to be home taking care of home watching over the children and the home and keeping the home and it's not a bad place to be i think the world because women want so much power they think they're supposed to be equal to the man they've asked for something that they're not really even entirely ready for 
that they don't even truly understand. And okay, you definitely have to wet these if you wanna use a brush. So yeah, and also it's like, where are you dwelling as you're believing for your husband? Like, are you dwelling in a place where you don't see a successful marriage? You don't see marriages thriving or anything like that because that can be a very dangerous place to be too. You don't even know what marriage is supposed to look like if all you see around you is marriages failing, people getting divorced. And I just, I see things with a much more clear view now and I just wish that I could warn and tell so many people about it and that's what my channel is, is here for. That's why God gave me this platform because I'm not able to go and freely speak to people or even living in America is like you get shunned for a lot of things for not believing the way somebody wants you to believe or just little things like that. Okay, I'm not throwing shade or anything like that. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. All I'm saying is people need to be more aware of their surroundings and be more discerning of things that they're participating in or things that they are a part of. Because if everything around you is dying, um, relationships, marriage, uh, friendships, which is also like relationships. Um, you notice that people are just not standing or you notice that like obviously something's wrong because people keep leaving or you see a lot of people that come and go. You have to wonder why. Like something should click in your head and wonder why. And it, especially if there's only one common denominator to the situation, it's obviously something bigger, something that people don't wanna let on. Let's talk about religion and where this world is headed on that aspect. I watched this video by Truth and Edited and he titled it, Which Jesus Do You Serve? Um, and he also has one titled, uh, Are You a Fan of Jesus or a Follower of Jesus? Because there is a very big difference. Be a fan of Jesus, it means that you like everything that he can do for you and things like that without any consequences. Now the Jesus of this world, which is Satan, um, because the pagans and which is what a lot of people celebrate on Christmas and Easter and things of this nature. So these pagan gods, that's what you're celebrating on these holidays are the pagan gods, which is pretty much just Satan. Whenever people say pagan, they mean Satan. That's who you're, that's who you're worshiping. That's who you're celebrating. And he's very clever. He tricks you and he deceives you when you don't know your word. You know, like I was saying, he tricks you and he deceives you when you don't know your word. And that's why it's so important that you read for yourself without the voices of your pastor, without the voices of your friends, without the voices of mentor, but just be one with God and tell God, you lead me, you guide me, you show me what you need me to see and learn. Um, now it's okay to go to people if you have questions. That's always a good thing to do, to have somebody that you trust to go to, um, but not somebody who's just gonna tell you what you wanna hear. Um, the God of this world will tell you, all you have to do is love me, but you can sin and there won't be any consequences. I tell everybody constantly, you really do reap what you sow in this world. Does that mean that God is a bad God? No, not at all. But he does command us to love him and the way we love him is by obeying him. And you can see that in John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And that means obey him. When we obey him, that means that we're truly learning his word and studying his word and doing things that he tells us to do. And within that, he's able to show us our faults, the faults of this world where we're being deceived. But you have to want to know it. The word says, seek and you shall find. And it's not just talking about the good. It's talking about where you're being deceived, the deception. If you seek God's word, he'll show you where you've been deceived, where you're being deceived. And he'll also show you how to correct it. And sometimes that comes with loss and grief and hurt, but that's okay because 
he can also heal. And that's something that I'm learning. I'm still going through a healing process. I still am very hurt because um, I really do feel like I lost something. It may not have been a physical death, but it was a death, you know what I mean? And so recently, you know, at first I was just hurt. I didn't understand, you know, like it hurt. And I am not, and I'm not afraid to say that I did enter the angry part of grieving, I guess you could say. Um, I told my husband, you know, I had to delete a lot of people off of Facebook and it wasn't because they did something to me. It's not because I don't like them or because I don't love them, but it's because I do love them and it makes me angry to see them and to know that they could possibly be being deceived, not 100% but they are being deceived and it makes me angry on the inside and the fact that i can't just go and speak my feelings because they're gonna be like oh ali is crazy because somebody who's truly living for god and they tell you the true things of god it sounds crazy i'm pretty sure a lot of people who watch my videos and i start randomly talking about god and the things of god like i probably sound crazy and I'm okay with that now and I realize that that's why it's best to be by myself and I'm also learning that the closer you get to God, the less friendships you do have and that's okay because when you're left with no one, all you can do is spend time with God and learn. You can't depend on anyone. All you can do is learn how to depend on God and I've become very, very, very aware of that and very, very okay with that. And I think a lot more people need to be okay with not having people surround them 24-7 and baby them and spoon feed them the word of God 24-7. And you can say, oh, I read for myself, but are you going in to learn from God? Or are you going in to read the way somebody told you to read with the context that they're telling you to read it with? I want to read the Bible with the context that the Bible intended it to be read in and not the context that a man told me to read it in. And that's what I love about our new church. But because it's so, it's truth. And there hasn't been a sermon that I've gone to that hasn't hit me, that hasn't made me feel offended. And it's not offended, I mean, People at our new church don't know us on a deep personal level. So I know they're not doing it to me intentionally, but it's God speaking through that person. And that's true conviction. Um, to be sitting in a sermon and then to really get a heart check and really have to self-reflect in the middle of the sermon. And then Brian and I would leave church sometimes and we're sitting there silent in the car until one of us is like, well, what did you think about that? And it's so crazy because it'll hit us in two different ways, but it gave both of us a very deep, intense heart check in our walk with God and with the way we're raising our children, just everything because they don't sugarcoat anything. They don't spoon feed us. I mean, yes, we're going to be fed, but we're truly being fed the hard bar hard parts of the Bible to eat and chew on and swallow. And I mean, Brian and I will chew on what we were fed on Sunday for the entire week. <laughs> and that's why we try to chew it together on Sunday afterward and just dwell in that place of um, learning and stuff like that. And I can say like being able to you know, lean on one another to see like, well, what did you get from this? What do you think it was saying has been great. And I love that I'm blessed enough to be able to have a husband that understands things and see, sees things on a much deeper level than I do because I tend to see things very surface level sometimes. And Brian and I both do. There's things that he sees very surface level and there's things that I see very surface level and we try to tell each other like, you're seeing things like, you're not seeing the big picture and we both have times like that. So it's nice that I have a husband that I can go to and talk about things like that and get to know more. But yeah, it's very nice to have Brian and be blessed with a godly husband who can see things in a realm that I can't see things and help me understand and help me calm down when I'm about to freak out. And I was talking to him the other day, it was Black Friday and we were at Target and I was getting so like, I guess this is what anxiety feels like. Um, he calls it like claustrophobia, which is still, I believe, a form of anxiety. But it was so packed in Target, which is the whole reason why I went to our super Target. Cause I didn't want to go to like our small Target cause I figured it was going to be way too packed in there. Went to the super Target, it was way too packed in there. <sighs> and people were being rude and nobody was saying, excuse me. And people were just bumping into me. And so like, I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting overwhelmed. And I'm like, what do I do? Like I'm panicking. 
talking. And so Brian's trying to talk to me. He's like, are you okay? Are you okay? Like, what's going on? Did I do something? I'm like, no, Brian, like, it's not you. And you know, like the way I'm coming off is like, well, it is him. And so we finally leave the store. And as soon as I walked outside, like I took a deep breath and I was like, <sighs> and so I start talking to him again. He's like, you have a whole different vibe now. I was like, I know, I'm sorry. Like I was trying to tell you that it wasn't me, but I guess it's what anxiety feels like. He's like, well, then you need to pray against that. I was like, I don't have anxiety on a daily basis. Like I don't feel anxious all the time. And I was, I was like, it's just like in that one moment in that store where everybody was being rude. It was so crowded. like. I didn't know what to do. He's like, oh, you know, like claustrophobic. You know, I, I get that way too. And I was like, well, you know, he's, he's like, I just got to tell you the way you're coming off is like, you have the problem with me, you know, like, so kind of try to control that. And I didn't see it like that. You know, I just expected him like, you need to understand that I'm frustrated because people in here are frustrating me and I don't see things like that. And so the fact that he's able to come to me and correct me gently is like, is is the best like i don't think like when you imagine a godly husband like that's what brian is for me like everything i imagined he's that and then some and he's not it's not all good um i can say i was very naive i can definitely say that i was very naive when i first got married because i was in christ and you think that when you find god that you know i always forget to use this <laughs> but i did use it the other day and i remembered and it was really pretty but when you find God, you expect things to never go wrong. You expect to have a perfect life when you're a baby. Well, when you're new to Christ. You're not very mature in the word yet. When you're barely finding him, you expect to have no problems. You're running in pastures and fields of flowers. And like, you expect it to be like that all of the time. Well, y'all, yeah. um, it's not. And especially if you're new in Christ, you expect to have a perfect marriage because you're in Christ and God is so for you and he's not against you, which means that the devil is even more against you. And you don't think of that when you're so new to God and like you're in this bubble. It's like a newlywed bubble with God and you think nothing can ever attack you. And like, that's not the case. And I was naive enough to think that that was going to be the case, but it's not. And it's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow because nobody tells you that. People and a lot of Christians, and I use Christians because I don't like being called a Christian. I'm just a follower of God. And um, I don't like that because you get thrown into a category that I'm not a part of. And so... Um, Anyways, they tell you, oh, you got to get married because this is what the Bible says. And this is the way God would have you do things like get married. You got to get married. You have a blessed life when you get married. But nobody's telling you when you get married, you're going to face times of trial, especially in the beginning, because the devil don't want you to, to be the example of Christ of the way God is with the world or with the way God is with his creation loving in unity wants to be in harmony um wants to thrive doesn't want anything to be against it nothing can tear that apart and but nobody tells you that and there's even been people because they're taught this that i've told like oh you know like you know in the beginning of your marriage like just don't be afraid to go to people don't be afraid to ask for help because it's not all butterflies rainbows and cupcakes and one girl had the audacity to tell me like oh we're never gonna fight and i was like girl if you never fight like you're not growing because with growth comes discomfort and within discomfort comes not wanting to give in there's pulling and tugging and growing pains which is arguments and or disagreements i should call them disagreements so it was cute i mean because and i didn't say anything you know i just kind of chuckled and walked away because I thought the same thing when I first got married. I was like, you know what? We're both in God. Nothing can come against us. Rock solid, baby. Like, like that's just what I thought. And so I couldn't even like really like be like, girl, you're crazy because I was crazy. And there are some people that you just have to kind of let them learn. And <laughs> I just thought it was funny because I was like, girl, I wish somebody was telling me 
Well, I'm telling you now. Like, I wish, girl. But I mean, that's okay. You're in that bubble. You're in the God so for my marriage that nothing can come against it. And it's right. That's completely true. Nothing will be able to break you if you don't allow it through God. Like, if you're in Christ and you don't allow it, nothing can break you. Nothing's broken Brian and I. Nothing will break Brian and I. Now, with that being said, with me saying like, nothing will break, break Brian and I, does that mean that we don't argue? No, Brian and I have disagreements all the time. We get frustrated with each other all of the time. Oh, this lipstick matches that lip liner perfectly. So the lip liner I used was Jordana in Plush Plum. And this is the smoking on screen lipstick that I got in my last boxy, Ipsy. But it's the way that you go through it. It's the way that you battle that argument. It's so much more about fighting together rather than fighting each other. I'm gonna go on with a little bit of this Instant Matte by Smashbox. And just put some of that on my finger. Cause I'm more of a matte lip girl. Y'all know this. Unless it's a straight up gloss. I don't like cream lipsticks. It has to be like straight up gloss or matte. No in between. <laughs> so crazy what people don't tell you about marriage but everybody can encourage you and it's not to say that those people won't be there but it's like I wish I would have known everything before I walked into that and who knows some people may not face everything at one time like Brian and I did because Brian and I faced everything within the first two years of our not even like the first year and a half of our marriage like we faced every problem that you could think of people trying to step in in our marriage people causing temptation in our marriage people coming against our marriage, financial problems. Like we faced everything within the first year and a half in our marriage. And now it's like, I'm so grateful that we did because now the further years, we can just tackle it. Like the little things that we face now, we encourage each other rather than get frustrated with each other. Like we used to get frustrated with each other about financial problems. And now it's just like, you know, Brian just always tells me, and I even today I had to encourage myself because we have some extra money and I'm like, I don't wanna spend no more money. Like I'm being like a Grinch with my money right now. And I'm just like, God, like it's, it's not about the money. Like what is the spirit that it has attached itself to me? It's where like, I don't even wanna go buy stuff that we need. I'm like, I need to hold on to this. And Ryan brought it up whenever we were Black Friday shopping. He was like, Allie, you keep talking like if we're gonna be broke and we're not gonna be broke. And we're not, like we're so far <laughs> from being broke right now. But my mind is like, because I have it, like I want to hold on to it. And I'm just waiting for God to be like, mm-mm, mm-mm, I'm not having that. And so what I've, and I've noticed it. And so I've been like, okay, God, like correct me, show me. And I was like, God, just let me help somebody. So that way I can quit feeling like this. Like, let me help somebody. And today on the way to Ethan's school, I was thinking about money again. And I was like, Lord, like, please help me and show me that it's not all about money that there are bigger ways to help there are better ways to help and you know i've been not wanting to put gas because i don't want to spend money like and so i went to ethan's school today and obviously i was dropping him off and there was a girl that i talked to every time i pick ethan up while we're waiting you know i conversate with her and i noticed when i was walking ethan to school i kind of heard her try to start her car and her car clicked and i was like okay so when I came out, I didn't think anything of it. Cause when I looked back at her, she just smiled. So I was like, okay, like, you know, she's fine. When I came outside from leaving Ethan, she was still out there. So I went up to her car. I said, you know, do you need a boost? And she was like, yeah. And mind you, I'm already like, I don't want to put gas. But whenever you give somebody a boost, like it's pretty much like gas wasted, not wasted. I don't want to say it like that. Cause I don't want to sound greedy, but like you're using gas to give somebody a boost and it was freezing. And so God, like it was a really humbling experience of God just being like, even when you were your brokest, um, Brian and I don't, didn't have start out with everything that we have now. And that's kind of why it took me so long to start my YouTube channel. Um, I tell you guys all the time, like I started out with a little bitty basket of makeup and an Android phone. And when we started out, we were sleeping on the floor. The only person who had a bed was Ethan. And that's because I bought it before I met Brian and we didn't have a bed. We didn't have a couch. We didn't have really anything 
and we barely had food and so like and today was just a reminder of like look where i have brought you with no money so if you have to spend it to get what your family needs spend it if i tell you to give it give it because i have always taken care of you and it was just such a beautiful reminder today and so something that i want to share with you guys is like it's not all about the money it's not all about the materialistic things remember that the kingdom that you are building is not to be built on this earth is it good to have resources and be able to go out and have fun yes it is but you have to do it with wisdom and remember that you're not to build your kingdom here on earth you're really not you're to put you're to be building your kingdom up in heaven and that's what i just keep being reminded of but um yeah so this is a completed look you guys like i said i'll pop everything up on the screen and prices that i used um and everything like that i'll even try to insert like you know like what colors i used in the palette and things like that um i love you guys um if you enjoyed this please go ahead and give me a thumbs up also if you haven't already and you enjoyed you know like just chit chat and with me learning some things go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh remember that jesus loves you more and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys Mwah.